Hi, I'm Maddie, and today I've come to the Brex, which is a beautiful area in Norfolk, known for its large open landscapes, short vegetation, and stony heath. And that makes it the perfect nesting site for the rare and bizarre looking stone curlew bird. curlew is a protected and very well camouflaged species which means it can be quite difficult to spot but luckily for me the wardens here are giving me exclusive access to a private hide and a camera which has already been set up to monitor a nesting pair. Hello everyone this is Sophie she is a summer warden at Wheating Heath so tell me a bit about the stone it, curlew. Okay so the stone curlew it's a heath chicken it's my best description really with a big yellow eye a little yellow beak and it's so camouflaged you would literally mistake it for a, a stone. Right. So we have sock cam out there. Sock what sock? <laughs> it's basically the warden's sock <laughs> that covered up the camera to make it a bit camouflaged but if you want to take a look and yeah. see what you can see. Where is it I'm looking? It should be in the um, little brown bird so it's very very hard to see i've got the solar panel so you go to the left go to the left of the solar panel oh yeah wow oh my goodness me so you can see how well camouflaged it is that is scary camouflaged yeah. and how like you could so easily miss it yeah because like, i keep thinking this is a really rare species yeah. and i was just like why on earth would these birds go and nest out in the middle of a, in an open field where they're completely vulnerable but actually they are so well camouflaged yeah. in that specific area it kind of makes sense yeah so this yeah. Hello. <laughs> it's what we're looking for on the heath. So obviously right now you can't see through the telescope, but what we're looking at that you can't see is this. Maybe we should go and do a little like test and go put that there and see if we can see it. <laughs> yeah. Just to prove this stony is gonna disappear. Right. I'm not gonna okay, I'm not gonna look. <laughs> and then I'm gonna try and find it with my camera. Have you hidden it? Right. I can't see, I promise I've turned the screen over. Why do they have such a bright yellow beady eye? The bright yellow beady eye is actually to let all the light in yeah. um, because they're dawn and dusk feeders. And there's very low light levels at night. Yeah. So it actually draws in all the light particles to actually yeah. maximise what they can see. And what do they eat? They eat little insects, little grubs. Um, I've even seen one take an adder, take a grass snake. Really? And like fling it up in the air. They're not that big. I mean, I'm surprised yeah. that they would take that on. And it's really sweet because in courtship time, yeah. their male actually goes and feeds and then or feeds them beetles and things like that. Yeah. And then brings it over to the female as a little present and she eats it. Oh. The general public don't have access to the hide we're in today and that's because of initiatives put in place to stop disturbance on the birds. Back in the 1930s, the stone curlew it suffered serious decline and that's because a lot of the landscape that they liked to nest in was given away for agriculture and it made them really vulnerable to farming machinery. Back in the 80s we had a lot of problems with egg collectors as well, yeah. so people would steal the eggs um, because they had a pretty pattern on them Ooh. and the actual pattern on the egg is unique to any other is it? Well. So this, as you can see, it's got a really unique like dash pattern, but that is for the first clutch. The second and the third clutch are just the same as any stone curler in the whole world, whereas this first clutch is completely unique, which is why it was such a big thing for egg collectors. Oh. So also, it, this hide it keep, helps us keep on top of people as well. We keep talking about these as um, pairs, yeah. but that's because they are they're monogamous. Yes, so yeah. they mate for life, and once they find their partner, that's it. And when they fly back over to Morocco in the Is winter- Is that where they go? Yes, okay. and North Africa, they actually, um, they go together, which is quite sweet. Oh. And we've got three pairs behind us right now. Oh. Um, but the weather hasn't been the greatest, and they're quite fussy when it comes to the weather. If I, if I was coming back, I'd go back to Morocco, because <laughs> the weather's been so awful. Yeah, um, I don't blame them. And so they do go into hiding. Back in 1985, there were only 160 breeding pairs left in the UK. But now, you have to have a special licence to get anywhere near them, and thanks to the conservation and all the land management work carried out by the likes of Sophie and her team, we're now up to 400 pairs. Okay. So is our fake stony down? Stony's down. Okay, all right then, I'm gonna try and find it. Whoa! Is that proper camo? That is proper camo! Yeah. Look at that! Yeah, see? Yeah, you can't even see that now. Oh my, I actually can't find it. Can, I, can you go see it? Is it? Is that, that's it? No, oh, I, <laughs> I was looking at a rock in front. That is so funny. I am very impressed. Nice one, stone curlies. 
And that's it for this video guys. I really hope you enjoyed learning about the stone curlew and this beautiful part of the world, the Brex. Subscribe for more videos just like this, stay curious and I'll see you soon. So we're searching these watercourses for locations with lots of water bowl activity.